Hello again. This is Amy with Prairie Loft with another story in our series of Sitting Under Trees Reading Books. And I'm not under a tree. I'm actually next to a barn because I liked the fact that there's a white house and a red barn in this story. And we have our white workshop and our red barn right across the field from me. And I wanted to be where we could see that view. And, um, you know, I'm under the other white barn, which is made of trees. So does that count? So thank you for joining me today. I hope you're having a great day or evening or wherever you may be, whenever you may be. And it's getting on toward the winter season. So I thought it would be an appropriate time to read Sleep Tight Farm. A Farm Prepares for Winter by Eugenie Doyle, illustrated by Becca Statlander. And I hope you enjoy this story as much as I do. Sleep Tight Farm. The December days shorten and darken. We are busy putting the farm to bed. With our crops mostly in, strawberries, raspberries, vegetables, honey, and hay, now is the time to prepare for deep frost, the coming wind and snow. Many hands make light work, Mom says. They must live in a more southern climate than we do because this would all happen before December, wouldn't it? We shake straw over berry plants to blanket them from winter's frosty bite. Next April and May, they'll leaf out green and blossom white. In June, they'll give fruit so red and juicy we'll make jam and freeze berries to eat till summer comes again. We lick our lips, remembering. Good night, strawberries, covered with straw. We cut kale and chard and broccoli. We saw down tree-like Brussels sprout stems. We dig for the last carrots, beets, and potatoes to add to those stored in the barn. There they await winter markets and our own winter meals. The fields rest, brown and bare. Dad tills and plants a cover of oats and rye to protect and replenish the fields that gave us so much. Good night, fields, peaceful and still. Dad cuts back the raspberries before wind and snow can crack the canes. We cart the old brush to burn. Goodbye to last year's twigs and leaves with their bugs and spots. The promise of late summer's plump fruit lies in roots tucked underground. Good night, raspberries, resting below. We stack wood by the house and in the sugar house too. It will heat our home all winter and in early spring it will fuel the fire that boils maple sap into syrup. Good night, stacked wood, waiting to work. I take it back about the southern climate. Maple sugar from maple trees needs a hard frost before us. Who knows where they live? I'm guessing, hmm. I don't know. Vermont? Minnesota? Michigan? Don't know. Before the winter winds come howling, we secure the hoop house's plastic sides with ropes and bales of hay. Inside, we float sheets of white cloth over the baby greens till the New Year's thaw. Safe under cover rest little leaves with mouth-filling names. Spinach, Mizuna, Tatsoi, Arugula. Our winter salad greens will nap till stronger sun can wake them. Last August, the hoop house grew so hot, we rolled up the sides and flung open the doors while picking tomatoes, melons, and heat-loving okra. Now we button up the perfect shelter for changing weather. Good night, hoop house, wrapped up tight. We board up chinks in the chicken coop and set a timer to give the hens the light they need to lay eggs all winter. 
we fluff the nests with hay, plug in the water heater, scoop fresh grain. We collect the day's eggs, fragile gifts from our friends. Good night, chickens, snug in your coop. With bales of hay, we build a windbreak for the beehives and place a stone on each lid to hold it firm. We make the hive entrances smaller to keep roaming field mice out. Within each hive, a single queen lies in a cluster of maids working to keep her fed. In September, we harvested honey and wax, but left enough for the bees who made enough for us. Good night, bees, sheltered and safe. The farm stand is stocked for the holidays with fresh eggs, greens and roots, onions and garlic braids, decorative corn, honey and maple syrup. There's plenty for us and plenty to sell. Mom and dad move planter, cultivator, tiller and baler into the equipment shed, a shelter from rust and cold. The tractors go in last. Good night farm. The fire jumps in the wood stove. We feast on homegrown treats, vegetable soup and berry pie. We pull clinking lights from a box, untangle, tangle, to hang on the porch. Look, Mom says, the rising moon, the bright sway of stars in the sky. We light beeswax candles to soften the longest night. The farm is ready for down quilts of snow, the shush shush of wind. Dad tucks us in. Good night, farmers. Sleep tight. Sleep tight, farm. The end. Thank you for joining me to read Sleep Tight Farm here on our farm with the buildings that look just a little bit like those in the story. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you are finding time to read stories with each other and I hope that you'll join me again soon. Take care. Be well. Bye.